one too. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, Money, Lawns, and Death by John Wayne Communale. I dedicate this performance to my friend Jeff Hunter. getting it. Okay, okay, here we go. I have always had a good work ethic. And for the most part, I can credit my dad in the example he set for me growing up. I don't think he was trying to teach me anything on purpose, though. He had to work so hard, and his mind was too occupied to pause for a potential teachable moment, but the lesson was learned. I was far from spoiled as a child, and if I wanted something, I had to earn my own money to buy it. My brother and sister and I were assigned chores to complete every weekend for which we were compensated in the form of a small allowance. Being the oldest, the lion's share of chores were of course heaped upon me, including the biggest and most time-consuming task coming in the form of yard work. I hated this job with all my being, but there was no getting out of it, and there was certainly no complaining in our house. My weekend couldn't officially begin until the yard work was done, and there were many Fridays I rushed home from school to complete the task that evening, so to be able to enjoy a full freedom of an entire Saturday. I was also the kid that did all his homework on Friday night, so I wouldn't have to worry about it. For a while, my allowance was enough to satisfy my humble needs, until I turned 14, and a pair of shoes became the object of my obsession. Everyone at my school had Nikes. Everyone. Everyone except for me, of course, whose parents were still buying shoes exclusively from Payless. I knew the drill, but asked my parents anyway, getting the answer I expected. I would have to save my allowance and buy them on my own. But at that rate, I'd graduate high school before I had enough money. <laughs> my dad always gave me sound advice on the matters such as these, so I asked him what he, think, what he thought I should do to earn more money, to which he replied, get a job. <laughs> this was logical, of course, but the job market for unskilled 14-year-olds was pretty barren at the time. <laughs> the next day, my dad came into the house with a solution to this problem. He told me he talked to the neighbor across the street, whose name was Chris. And Chris told my dad how his son was going into the Marines in a week. Among the detractors of his son moving out was that he and his wife would have to find someone to take care of their lawn. They were both in their late 50s and terribly obese, which was why they probably just didn't take on the job for themselves. This was the first time my dad sold me into indentured servitude. <laughs> he told Chris that I was looking for a way to earn some extra cash for some shoes, and, I sh and he should have me do it for 10 bucks a week. Now, I was not present during these negotiations. <laughs> or otherwise, I would have haggled on the pay, but at the time, I was generally satisfied. I was pretty sure my dad already told Chris I would do it without asking me, but I jumped at the offer nonetheless, developing temporary amnesia for my hatred of all yard work. The memories came quickly rushing back in a bad way when I started up the mower in Chris's yard that Saturday. I hated yard work more than anything in the world. Now instead of losing some of this precious Saturday to mowing one lawn, I would lose even more having to mow two. The thought was demoralizing enough Actually doing it was 10 times worse. Chris's yard was smaller than ours, but the grass in his backyard was thicker and overrun with weeds. Also, Chris and his wife owned two chows that shit so much, you would think they were herding cattle back there. Trust me, running over many piles of shit with a self-mulching mower doesn't end up good for anyone involved. 
This, and Chris's constant pointing out that I missed a spot, made the job significantly longer than it should have been. When I was done, I would trudge back across the street with bleeding calluses and specks of shit covering my legs from the mid-thigh down. I hated every second of mowing that lawn. I was constantly a pussy hair away from quitting. <laughs> but, despite the pussy hair, the desire for my coveted Nikes spurred me on. The going was a lot slower than I anticipated. Even with the weekly $10 bump, I was still ways off from the money I'd need. I kept telling myself it was worth it, but along with the difficulty of the job, the way Chris interacted with me was slowly poisoning the well. He was never in a good mood. He would speak to me in that curt, condescending way one only talked to someone they had over a barrel. I think he had resentment issues between he and his son and were projecting them onto me, or he was a giant asshole. <laughs> Either way, I took the abuse, keeping my head down and my eyes on the prize. After a few weeks, a friend of mine at school told me he and his brother had also started mowing lawns on their street for $10. The difference being, they were doing the work together and each being paid $10. Not 10 to split between them, but 10 a piece. I would not know what spiraling out meant until much later in life, but this was the first time I experienced it. I could think of nothing the rest of the day except how I was being hosed by my prick of a neighbor and what was I going to do about it. When I finally got home from school that day, I unburdened my frustrations upon my dad, asked what he thought I should do. He imparted on me the wisdom of a man who had worked hard his whole life and said, if I wanted to raise, I should just ask for it. That was that. Just knock on the door. Look right into the hate-filled glare of a man who's clearly <laughs> misdirected anger he felt over his life issues at me, anyone else he happened to, and anyone else he happened to be around, and ask him for a raise? A few days later, I finished mowing Chris's lawn and did just that. I knocked on the door to collect my pay and launched into my spiel I had been practicing in my head all morning. I told him, I felt I'd been working hard, and the job took longer than usual since I had to deal with all the weeds and all the dog shit and, and how my friends were also mowing lawns too, but getting paid more than me. For these reasons, I told him, I felt I deserved an extra $5 a week. I didn't want to be greedy. Asked for 10, plus I thought he'd be more comfortable moving up in $5 increments. Chris's eyes narrowed, his lips puckered, like a lemon-flavored lesion had all of a sudden burst in his mouth. <laughs> My wife and I will discuss it and let you know, he said in an aggravated tone and shut the door. I went home feeling hopeful, since I hadn't been giving a definite no right away, so I felt there was at least a chance. I waited all week expecting a phone call from Chris, or waited for him to come by and deliver his decision to me, but there was no communication from him. On Saturday, I went across the street to perform my duties as usual, but was racked with nervous anxiety waiting for his answer. When I finished, I knocked on the door to collect my pay and my answer. Chris opened up, stood in the doorway, his massive body eclipsing my view into the house behind him. There was a beat of silence as we stared at each other, and then I finally spoke. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Did you get to? Yes, we discussed the raise, he said, cutting me off. The truth is, I don't think you do good enough job to be paid the $10 we already do, let alone $5 more. The answer is no. With that, he reached out and stuffed a greasy, wadded up $10 bill into my hand and shut the door. I held my tears in until I made it to my house where I exploded in a fit of crying rage. My parents came to see what was wrong and through hyperventilated sobs, I told them what happened. I was too upset to give my parents a chance to console me and I shouted over and over again that I quit, I quit and I hated Chris. I hope he died, I hope he died. 
I'd, I'd use up all the confrontational energy in my 14-year-old body. <laughs> I proclaimed to my dad that since he got me the job, he was telling Chris I quit because I never wanted to see or talk to him again. I hope he died. <laughs> there, they were finally able to calm me down, trying to tell me what a valuable lesson I learned and all that bullshit. <laughs> but at that point, I didn't care. The next day, my dad went over to Chris's house and told them I wasn't going to mow their stupid lawn anymore. I'm sure they did the things adults do when they talk about kids saying things like, well, you'll learn one day, and I thought it toughened him up, or other similarly dismissive remarks. I held my ground as far as never talking to him again, or even looking in his direction if he was outside. I went back to being happy with my paltry allowance, and although it took a while, I was able to buy the shoes I so badly thought I had needed. A few years went by, and I never changed how I felt about my neighbor Chris. I eventually moved out my freshman year of college. I didn't think about him at all for a long time until my sister called me one morning. She told me the night before, the police and ambulances showed up across the street at Chris's house. She watched from her window as they wheeled a body out on a gurney covered in a sheet. And they came down the driveway she said an arm fell out from under the sheet and dangled lifelessly like something you'd see in a movie. She told me Chris had a heart attack and Chris had died. hung up the phone, thinking about how I held such a grudge against this man for years, spraying mental hate rays at him silently from across the street. I mean, this guy was clearly unhappy in his life, which I had nothing to do with, but he took it out on me when, when he could without giving it a second thought. And I thought about how for so long I wished he was dead. And now he was dead. And all I could think was, Fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm a hard worker, okay? And because of my parents, they set the example for me. That's for sure. But I never wanted anyone to say to me what Chris did that day, which is another form of motivation in itself. Since becoming an adult, owning my own house, I kept good on a promise I had made myself all those years ago. I haven't mowed a lawn since I moved out of my parents' house, and so help me God, I never will. Thank <laughs> you.